Well, howdy folks. So for this last video, we're going to look at reflections uh, over the x-axis with our trig functions. So uh, let's go ahead and do a quick sketch of our secant of x function. Uh, we need to pick an axis here, so let's go ahead and let, let each x tick uh, be a pi over 4, and each uh, y tick, uh, let's go ahead and just have it be uh, a half. And so for example, the secant of 0 is equal to 1 over the cosine of 0, which is equal to 1 over 1. And so we would plot that point right there. For the trig functions that have asymptotes, my recommendation is always to sketch your asymptotes first, remembering that the secant function is going to be defined, undefined, excuse me, whenever the denominator of that fraction is 0, which happens whenever the cosine value is 0. So what you can do, and this is a handy trick for sketching the graph of cosine is you could, or secant, is you could do a quick sketch of not the secant function, but the uh, cosine function. So we've sketched that a couple times today. Uh, let me go ahead and sketch that. So I'm putting the graph of the cosine function in blue here. Uh, and I'm just plotting some marker points for myself, keeping in mind, you know, for example, this would be two tick marks, so that's this point right here is where the input is pi over 2 and the cosine of pi over 2 is 0. And so this would be the graph, not of the one that I want to sketch right now, but this would be a graph oops, of the secant function right here. And the secant function is undefined wherever the cosine function is 0 that's a handy way to remember where our asymptotes are for this. I'm going to go ahead and sketch the asymptotes for the, not the cosine, it doesn't have any asymptotes, but for the secant function that we want to sketch. So here I am sketching the asymptotes for the secant function. So for example, here's x equals pi over 2, x equals uh, 3 pi over 2, and here's x equals minus pi over 2, and x equals minus 3 pi over 2. In green here I've sketched the asymptotes, which is where our secant function, which I'll sketch here in magenta, is undefined. And so here is the graph of our secant function. So there's a quick rough sketch of it. Careful, not the blue graph, but this uh, green magenta graph is the graph of our secant function. So now we want to sketch a graph of minus the secant of x. So that's not going to um, affect the uh, locations where this function is undefined. It's not going to uh, affect, it's not going to stretch or shift the graph. But what it will do is reflect the graph over the y-axis. In fact, let's go ahead and just jump down to our summary here for this. Suppose you know the graph of f of x, then the graph of g of x equals minus f of x is just the graph of f reflected over the uh, y-axis. Excuse me, folks, uh, that's incorrect, over the x-axis. Okay, And we can see that, for example, if I were to go ahead and evaluate minus the secant of 0, that would just be minus 1 over the cosine of 0, which is equal to minus 1 over 1, or minus 1. And so when we input a value of 0 into this new function, g of x, it's going to output not a 1. This outputted, there was the order pair 0, 1. This is going to output the order pair 0, negative 1. And in fact, that's going to have the effect, like we just said down here, of reflecting the graph about the x-axis. So let's go ahead and check that. Everything gets reflected about the x-axis, and so here would be this, um, I don't know a good word for this uh, single shape, sometimes people call them horseshoe shapes. It's really incorrect to call them a parabola, but that one segment of the secant function, and there would be the asymptotes. So notice the asymptotes aren't going to change. This is still going to be undefined at all of my odd multiples of pi over 2. So the asymptotes haven't changed, so let's go ahead and finish sketching those out. And then we can go ahead and finish reflecting this over the y-axis. So here is the graph of minus the secant of x sketched here. And 
uh, that's that's really all there is to it is reflecting it over the um, x-axis. You have the option, folks, to go ahead and resketch your cosine function if you wish, and you could have done that before you sketched the graph of your uh, cosine. Uh, uh, before you graph the uh, secant function, that would have been fine. So you have a couple of options for how to do that. I do ask though that if you sketch both graphs simultaneously, that you do take the time to label which one is the graph you're drawing my attention to. So this is the graph of minus the secant of x. Okay. So what I'd like you to do now on your own is I'd like you to go ahead and resketch the graph of tangent of x. I think I've done that uh, somewhere already in this uh, pre-work. So resketch the graph of tangent of x here, and then I want you to sketch the graph of minus the tangent of x. Then as your last problem, after you're done with that, your goal is to go ahead and pair each one of these uh, shifted sine functions, or transform sine functions, with the description of it. Being careful here, notice that 3 shows up twice, and you know, you'll notice that 3 shows up in a couple of locations here uh, as I describe these, so just be careful as you're working through those. Folks, that's the last of these videos. Uh, go ahead and jump into your MyLab Math pre-work after this, and thank you for your patience.